In this video, I'm going to show you how to take HTML and CSS that we found online and turn it into an Elementor dynamic widget where the user can change the text, the HTML tag, and even the style like alignment, typography, and all the different colors and edit them himself. Let's get started. <laughs> Hi and thanks for joining. It's Amit from Unlimited Elements. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you step by step how to take some HTML and CSS that you found online, doesn't matter where, and create an Elementor dynamic widget where a user can drag and drop in on the page and edit all the different settings like typography, colors, text, content, links, whatever. So the first step is actually jumping into WordPress. You're going to want to make sure you have unlimited elements. It's a free plugin that you can find at the repository. Just download and activate it by going to plugins, add new, search for unlimited elements and activate and install it to your WordPress website. There's a lot of free stuff over here. And one of the free things is the ability to create your own widgets using the widget creator. And I'm going to take you step by step and show you with just basic coding knowledge, how you can do this. So the first thing is to jump into the category that you want to add your widget to your custom widget, click add widget, give that widget a name and a title and click add widget. It's been added to our widget library over here to our grid and we can double click on it to edit. And this part, of the widget is the widget creator framework and we'll be working with all the separate tabs over here to create a custom widget now it's not a complicated process it's pretty simple so i'm just gonna take you through step by step don't worry and another thing that i want you guys to know is that this code over here i'm just gonna paste a link in the description so anyone who wants to practice because practice makes perfect can practice along with me and go step by step and see how awesome and easy it is. So first step first, I'm going to copy the HTML, jump back into my widget editing mode, and I'm going into the HTML tab, going to delete whatever's here and paste the HTML that we've just copied. The next thing, CSS, same thing, copy paste, CSS tab and paste that. Click update to save. And what's so awesome about this is right now, I'm just going to open a new demo page. I'm going to call my page demo, publish and edit with Elementor. And you'll see that this widget has already been added to our WordPress website. So let's check that out. I'm going to search for the new widget we've just created, multicolored text drag and drop it inside. And as you can see, it's been added to the page. Look how awesome that looks. We don't have any settings yet, but we've already created a new widget, a custom widget. As it says over here, no settings for this widget. Let's start creating the settings. So jump back into the editor and the first in the settings you actually add over here in this tab attributes. So the first setting I'm going to add is a text field for changing the text. So let's add a text field give this a name text click tab to fill in the name over here and default value I'm just gonna write limited elements the default value is actually pretty important it's the first text the user will see once he adds this widget to the page so think what you want to put over there jump into the HTML tab and this is our static text I'm just going to mark it select it with my mouse by drag and drop and I'm going to replace it with this ID that we've just added over here, this uh, attribute. So whatever we add in the attributes over here, each attribute will be represented on this right side over here in a blue attribute. And we can just highlight any text and click on that new dynamic attribute and it will replace it over here. Click update to save, jump back into the editor for testing going to refresh the page and now we will see that 
we can edit the text of the widget. So let's let the editor load, click on the widget to edit, and over here you can now see that this is dynamic text, that the user can determine whatever he wants to edit over here. Of course, it also supports dynamic tags in case the user has a Elementor Pro, this option will be available. So next part is we're going to actually let the user decide what uh, HTML tag he wants to use. So add attribute. Now instead of text field, we're going to use a drop down field. Over here, we're going to write HTML tag and give the user all the different options that we want to be available. So div is going to be the default. And except for div, I'm going to add all the different H tags. So from H1 up to H6, even though it takes a couple of seconds, but it's really important for me to give ultimate flexibility to let SEO guys and stuff like that use whatever tag that they want, because usually something like this is going to be used as a headline. So all these H tags are important. So I've added that. And now inside of the HTML, I'm going to highlight the H1 tag over here and click on the new attribute that I've just added. We need to add this also in the opening part and also in the closing part. So we're all set to go with that. Next part is actually testing this. So let's jump in over here, click update to save before I refresh, refresh the page. And now when I click to edit the widget, we should have a drop down field that allows the user to select all the different kind of types of tags over here. Awesome. We have that set up. Next step is actually in the CSS part. What I want to do is change all of these static IDs from the HTML and CSS to a dynamic ID. Quick explanation what a dynamic ID is. It's a ID that generates itself to each unique instance of the widget on the page. This is used for widgets not to conflict with each other. So I'm just going to highlight the ID over here and click the ID, the dynamic ID here on the right side, it's called UCID. Awesome. We're going to do that same thing inside of the CSS tab. And it's a pretty simple widget, so we don't have too many places to put it. But I do suggest that you use this consistently wherever you need to. Next part, if we're already over here, I'm going to take off all of the styling stuff over here uppercase, font weight, font size, font family. We want the user to be able to edit these and we don't want them to be static. We want to make it dynamic. So to do that, I'm just going to jump into attributes and over here, I'm not going to put it in the content part. We're going to put it in the style part. So click plus over here to add a new style section. I'm going to give that a name. Now this widget is pretty simple. So I'm keeping the name simple. Click on the style. And now we're going to add a to that section an attribute. The attribute is going to be typography. And we're going to call it typography. And over here in the CSS selector, what we need to do is actually copy our class name from here, which wraps the text into the CSS selector. Now, once I paste it, I do need to add a dot at the beginning because that's how CSS selector works. A dot stands for has this class name. So update that, update over here, go into the editor, refresh the editor, and now we should have the option to edit all of the typography settings. Click on the widget to edit, style tab, and now let's make our font bigger. You can change the font family, anything that's available inside of a WordPress and uh, inside of Elementor should be available for you over here. So I'm going to click update to save and we're going to, for the next part. The next part is doing the color fields. So for the color fields, let's just jump into the CSS and see how that looks. I'm going to copy the first color, jump into attributes, add new attribute, search for a color picker attribute. So 
since that's what we're looking for. I'm going to call it color one. And this is built from five colors. So I'm going to need to do each one separately. Jump into the CSS, highlight the color, and click on the attribute. We're going to repeat this stuff another four times. Color two, paste in, add attribute, CSS tab, color two, color two. This is the third one, color three, paste that in, CSS tab, color three, color three. This is number four, color four, paste that in, CSS, scroll down. Now you see that's why it's always important for me because if you're new to this, you might not know that you need to scroll down over here. So that, that's why I like showing stuff without going fast forward in the video and stuff like that. I, I want to point out all this tricky stuff that might be uh, tricky for new users. Color four. And last one. No, that was long, but thanks for hanging on with me, guys. That's the best way to learn. Let's do this one and scroll down, paste that in. So we are done. Let's click update jump over here and refresh the page and test it. I mean, each time we add something new, we do want to test it. So I'm going to go into style over here. Let's choose pink color. And you can see that over here, the pink color has been added. Awesome. So we have everything set up. The last thing that I want to finish up with is an alignment setting. So the alignment setting we're going to add to our wrapper over here. I'm going to copy the class name, jump into attributes, add attribute, I'm going to do it as a drop down, going to give it a name alignment and CSS selector. We're going to add dot and our name. So don't forget the dot when using CSS selectors. Over here, we're going to add all the different options. So center, left, and right. Awesome, I think we got it. And the last thing we need to do, or the last two things we need to do, is first of all, write the value. And so this is a text align. And over here, instead of writing static text, we're going to take this value and paste it inside. So this is going to be whatever value the user chooses from the drop down element. Last thing, add a responsive control. This will just make the ability to determine whatever text line the user wants in, on tablet and mobile or whatever. And he decides, add attribute, click update. Maybe let's move this one to be first. Let's save again. Refresh the page over here. And let's see that everything's working properly and finish up this video. So I see it's already centered. Jump into style. You can align to the left, to the right. And this is a responsive control, meaning the user can override this on different devices widths. So I hope this was helpful to you guys. If it was, don't hesitate. Please subscribe. There's going to be more content, more cool stuff. and You should get updated. So thank you for now. Leave me some comments in the comment section if you have questions. And I'll see you next time.